the user interface, or UI, is how a user interacts with an application. Now, the application doesn't have to be a computer application. You could have a mobile phone app or a web app. You could even have a microwave oven, as most all applications and devices have some sort of user interface components. The exception to this could be found maybe in batch applications, which run in an automated fashion on a set schedule without any need for a person to interact with it. The study of how people interact with computers, apps, etc. is called Human-Computer Interaction, or HCI. Because it is so important, you will actually find that there's two different groups of people that will help you design the interfaces to work with the computer. One is what they call UX, or the User Experience Experts. The other is UI, or User Interface Experts. They do similar roles, and often UI individuals will learn a bit about UX by working with them, and vice versa. Depending upon the size and the complexity of the app, you may find that you need one or both groups to make your application truly easy to use. In his book on interface design, Theo Mandel sets out three separate golden rules. One, place the user in control. Two, reduce the user's memory load. And three, make the interface consistent. Let's look at each of these to get a good overview of user interface design. First, let's talk about placing the user in control. Now, it is said that a good user interface is much like a joke. If you have to explain it, it isn't good. Therefore, your application's UI should strive to be intuitive to your user. There's several ways that you can do this. For example, don't make the user do unnecessary steps. Years ago, when the military was building some of the first applications to be used out in the field, there was a rule that you had to be able to get to any other screen from where you were in three clicks or less. No unnecessary steps. We're going to revisit this in just a minute to explain why. Second is maybe we're going to provide some different ways to do the same thing. For example, you might hit Control P on your keyboard, or you might click on the print icon, or you might go to the file menu and choose File and then Print. All three of those actions will allow you to print a document in most applications. They all do the same thing, but they allow the user to choose what's easier for them. You see, some people hate keyboard shortcuts. They hate having to learn them, they hate having to spread their fingers out to hit special command keys, and they're not going to use them. On the other hand, other people hate menus. And some people, they don't like buttons and icons cluttering up their interface. So no matter what, when you give them three different ways to pick, the user gets to be controlled is they get to pick the way that they want to do it. The next thing you want to think about is can you make these steps undoable? For example, Control-Z. How often do you use that because you make a mistake? This is a great thing, especially if you're dealing with complicated steps and you can go back multiple steps. Casual users don't need to worry about the technical aspects if you put them in control. This is especially true during setup and configuration. WordPress is one of the most common and easily used blogging software apps out there to install. Why? They have a famous 5-minute install, which in reality only takes about 90 seconds. And practically no technical skills are needed. Depending upon your host, none may be needed. The next thing you want to look at is reducing the user's memory load. That is what they have to remember to do to get something done. Remember that military example from before? See, they didn't want soldiers who were out in the field being shot at, trying to have to recall the 15 steps it takes to load the next screen. Everything had to be readily accessible and easy for them to work with. 
because they were in a potentially highly stressful situation. This also means that sometimes you're going to establish meaningful defaults. Remember WordPress from before? Well, for most people, it works right out of the box. Anyone can add to it, but out of the box, it's going to do about 90% of what you need, maybe even more. The default values get you mostly there. And just like having good and meaningful defaults, you want intuitive shortcuts. Control P makes sense to print. If you had to press Alt Shift L P because it's a line printer, that wouldn't be easy. Your fingers would have to go all over a place and it would be hard to remember. In fact, I've seen a lot of keyboard shortcuts where they start to get like that, and it's not one or two characters, it's four or five, or and sometimes even six. It's not intuitive and it's not easy. And it's almost never used. Next, look at the finding interface based upon a real-world metaphor. The save icon looks the way it does because when it was created, that's what a disk looked like, and that's where people would often save things to. It was a great metaphor for it, and it's still used even though most computers haven't had a floppy disk drive in the last 12 or even more years. Of course, this shouldn't be taken to an extreme. If your application is trying to fix something that is broken in the real world, work at trying to fix it. Don't follow that metaphor to a fault. The next thing you want to look at doing is disclosing information in a progressive fashion. The interface should be organized hierarchically. That is, information about a task or an object or some behavior should be presented first at a high level of abstraction with more and more detail being presented as the user indicates interest. Don't give them information they don't care about. And finally, make the user interface consistent. Now, making the interface consistent is just going to help reduce that memory load, but it's also going to make it so it feels more familiar to them. I remember reading about a piece of software that had 11 different ways to exit the application based upon where you were in it. You had to know all 11 ways because you could be at any point in that application. There was no single standard way to get out. This was not easy to use. The VI text editor is another great example of what not to do. Under Unix, VI is a very powerful and it's often loved by the old and grizzled Unix veterans. But it is hard and confusing to use if you're not a power user. And it is completely intimidating to new users. You have to know what mode you're in, and the same keyboard shortcuts in one mode don't work on another. The next thing you can do is allow the user to put the current task in a meaningful context. Many interfaces implement complex layers of interactions with dozens of screens. It is important to provide indicators, that is, window tiles, graphical icons, color coding, etc., that will enable the user to know the context of the work at hand. One example I saw of this was a bank, and the bank had several major categories that they worked in. Personal banking, investing, personal loans, and business. Now, on this bank's website, each of those four major areas was given a different color. And whenever you saw that color, you knew that you were working in that particular area. If I was working in business and I saw blue for business and then saw yellow, I instantly knew I wasn't in the business banking area anymore. This was a very easy way to let me know about what context I was working in. In addition, the user should be able to determine where he or she has come from and what alternatives will exist for transitioning to a new task. Maintain consistency across a product line, that is, a family of applications, should allow you to implement the same design rules so that consistency is maintained for all interaction and the whole suite is well received. 
This is one of the major things that you've seen in application suites like Microsoft Office. For as much hate as people give Microsoft Office, why is it used so much? The fact of the matter is, it's very easy to use because they have chosen to make it easy to use by making things consistent across all of the applications. If past interactive models have been created for user expectations, do not make changes unless there is a compelling reason to do so. When Microsoft changed their user interface in Office 2007, it upset a lot of users who had been using it for 10 or more years. It was a huge gamble, but one that they had to take in order to make it more usable and add more features in the future. They spent years studying and testing, and when it was released, it was a huge success. In comparison, my wife, for example, hates when her phone gets updates. Every time it updates, they change where things are located, how she has to use them, and where the settings seem to be. She feels like a simple update to her phone shouldn't require her wasting weeks of time relearning how to use it again. And she is right. So keep your applications consistent amongst changes. And if there is going to be a change, make sure people are aware of it and they can easily learn the new interface.